Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, it's an event where the head of Adversor, actually the founder, uh, Scott Beal is here in the sound bar. So um, we tried to organize this event to share information and to have that opportunity to actually invite Scott so that he can share about Adversor, what it is, about the fellowship. And then you can also um, hear from the fellows who have been part of uh, this fellowship. Hello, I don't have a mic. Um, so Good evening. Thank you guys all for coming out. And let me just see if I can get this properly showing. Um, my name is Scott Bion. I'm the founder of Atlas Service Corps. I really want to thank you for coming out this evening so I can tell you a little bit about this organization, Atlas Corps, uh, so you can meet some of our alumni and equally exciting two women who are about to go on the program and learn about the work that we're doing in Atlas Corps. Learn about the vision and mission of this, I think, fairly unique organization that's developing leaders and strengthening organizations and promoting innovation in the, in the international nonprofit sector. I'm very excited to be here in Islamabad. It's my second trip to Pakistan, uh, and there's, I'm always just greeted with such um, hospitality and, and uh, everything from the food to the people. I love coming to Pakistan. So I'm glad to be here and glad to be able to uh, come to uh, this venue tonight and tell you a little bit about our organization. So this is Atlas Corps. We're an international nonprofit developing the world's best nonprofit leaders. And essentially, what we do is, as I said before, our mission is to develop leaders and strengthen organizations and promote innovation in the international nonprofit sector through an overseas fellowship for rising nonprofit leaders. And so we're about five years old. In fact, we're celebrating our, our fifth birthday. This is one of our, our celebrations around the world as I travel the world this year. Uh, we've only been around for a few years, but we've already accomplished a lot in that time. In 2006, Atlas Corps was incorporated in, in the U.S. as a nonprofit, and it took us a year to get off the ground, it took us a year to, to get established, but by 2007, we had our first fellows. We started in India and Colombia, because at the time I was living in New Delhi, India, and then I moved to Bogota, Colombia, so that's why we started there. Uh, and then from 2008, we, we started sending Americans abroad, and then we've expanded every year since then into our seventh class of fellows, which we're about to launch now. Now we've supported a hundred nonprofit leaders from over 30 countries, four of which, four of which are from Pakistan. So especially from the Pakistan. <laughs> all four of our Pakistan fellows are here tonight. You'll meet, you'll meet all four of these these extremely talented women. But what about the development sector? What about nonprofit leaders? Well, for 50 years, Americans have gone to volunteer abroad with a program that's called the U.S. Peace Corps. For 50 years, Americans have served in countries uh, in working on development issues. You see it with BSO, uh, bon uh, what I call the British Peace Corps. But um, Brits and Europeans have crossed borders volunteering. You even occasionally now get folks from uh, Pakistan going to do volunteer work in, in Kenya, what I call like South-South Fellowship. But what about development sector professionals going to volunteer in the United States? Does, does America have all of the answers when it comes to HIV AIDS, all of the answers when it comes to global warming? No, not at all. There's this perspective somehow that while we can benefit from engineers and scholars from around the world, for nonprofit professionals, there hasn't been this two-way exchange. That somehow, that technology makes sense to cross borders, but not when it comes to the treatment of women. Not when it comes to global warming. Not when it comes to education or poverty. These are the issues that are the most global. These are the issues that we need people to cross borders absolutely the most. But it's so difficult in today's world, everything from visas to finances for a nonprofit and NGO leader to cross borders. There was a market failure, if you will, in, in economic terms. It was very difficult for a Pakistani nonprofit leader, if possible at all, to volunteer in the United States. If corporate people can do it, and academic people, and religious people, and certainly villains can do it, then I think we need the heroes of the world. The people who are most committed to making the world a better place, they need to work together. They need to be networked. They need to know who are the most inspiring people in other countries. They need to be equipped with the skills and the knowledge to be able to affect social change. Uh, we only provide a stipend which covers basic expenses. I'm talking basic, like housing, food, transportation, um, not shopping, not sightseeing. 
Uh, most dancing in the U.S. is free, but uh, not expensive clubs. We cover a stipend which covers your basic expenses. You can probably get through the year without, we'll buy your plane ticket, take care of your visa, give you this living stipend, give you support. Um, but the idea is that this isn't a job. The idea that this isn't something that you would do motivated by money. The rewards from this experience are the knowledge, the learning, the network. So we want to make sure that no matter what your economic class or your family's background, that you can do this program. But you're not going to be able to send money back home to take care of your family, which maybe your cousin did when they went to work for IBM. Uh, this is not like working at IBM. Uh, this is like volunteering in the United States for a year. Um, those are the big questions, everyone. I'm sure there's more questions. Let's go to Masora and Shamila. I'll let Masora go first because she was a fellow before Shamila. Why at the score fellowship is unique, or what is different um, in this fellowship program? First, I guess it's for mid career professionals, um, and mostly, as uh, Scott said, that there are a lot of opportunities for the north part of the world that they get an opportunity to come to other countries and share their skills. Um, but in this fellowship, it's actually an opportunity for nonprofit leaders from the other side of the world to go to U.S. and share their skills also and to contribute in the nonprofit sector. So I was placed with a local nonprofit called Asian American Lead. Um, all the fellows are placed according to their experiences and trust. So I always wanted to do something on new development. I had some experience. Uh, and I was very passionate about it and I really thank God that I had the best opportunity and I think I was um, the lucky one to have the best, um, one of the best host organizations because I knew, I know Shamana would be saying the same words uh, because every fellow thought that you know their host organization is the best. Why I call it best because I was working uh, with the high school students um, and I developed a girls leadership program for the girls there. In US, if you know that uh, after school programs is a big part of their um, um, nonprofit sector also, there are a lot of programs for the young generation to engage them positively and build their leadership <coughs> skills. My question is actually that if you get a uh, fellow from Pakistan and they go to the US, will they be working in the US office in Dubai or will you actually be sending them to Dublin Bridge and do some of the other countries? All of our fellows serve in cities basically for one year. So if a Pakistani were to work in Grammy headquarters, they would go to Grameen, D.C. We've had about four or five fellows serve at Grameen Foundation. I want to know if uh, in uh, any new near future you are also thinking of um, extending this opportunity to uh, young leaders in the public sector because there is a, a lot of um, gap in the expertise and the yeah. skills in the, in, the development, uh, in the public sector. And this is the sector that is going to sustain and going to take over even the development sector. Right. And uh, that is my... Yeah, so, you know, I rely on the term nonprofit sector way too much. Um, the fact of the matter is, we're looking for people who are trying to change the world, and I think a lot of them are people in the public sector as well. I mean, myself, I worked for State Department, I worked in the White House, I worked at Ashoka, and I worked at Atlas Score. For me, it's never been about whether it's government or, or nonprofit, it's been what's been the greatest vehicle for me to affect social change. We have had some people from the public sector, especially IGOs like UNICEF or UN, but um, we've had journalists, we've had some private sector people. Um, so we are definitely open to someone who's working on HIV AIDS in Nigeria to come do HIV AIDS work in the US or whatever it may be in Pakistan. What Atlas Core is trying to do is develop the world's best leaders, strengthen these organizations, and create this global network. And I really just want to thank the fellows for being a part of it and for making it true, the, the alumni and the incoming fellows that are all nervous about to get on the plane in a couple weeks. But I really want to thank all of you guys for coming out tonight, for the work that you do in the nonprofit sectors and the public sector, for your interest in coming. But don't let it be an opportunity tonight to come and hear about some program. I want this to be an opportunity for you to come and to engage, to continue to provide feedback, to continue to share ideas, to invite new people to this network. I'm proud that we have four Pakistani nonprofit leaders, all from Rahopindi, in our program. Yeah. But I know there's more than just four Pakistani leaders who are, who are set for this program. And that I really appreciate your help in, in spreading the word and knowledge about this program, that Pakistanis can not only learn from the U.S., can also, and not only, but also serve in the U.S. 
And all I know that we can find ways for our countries and societies to work together to address these issues that we're all facing together. So at the end of the day, we have the same values, the same kind of the same overall end goal, and we're only going to achieve that by finding ways to effectively solve these problems together. So uh, thank you very much for coming tonight. Thank you very much.